What's up, everybody? This is Around the 412. I'm Tyler. With me, as always, is my co-host, Smitty. Got a video for you today. The NHL tread, trade deadline has just passed, and it's tough to say Jake Gensel is no longer a Pittsburgh Penguin. We were unsure where he was going to end up eventually. It seemed like the writing was on the wall that he was going to be gone, but there were a few teams in the mix, yeah. including the likes of New York, New York Rangers, Vancouver Canucks, Vegas Golden Knights, but he ends up being a Carolina Hurricane. Um, the initial trade is Jake Gensel for or Jake Gensel and Ty Smith, excuse me, for Michael mm -hmm. Bunting, Vili Koivunin, Vasily Ponomarev, Cruz Lucius, a conditional first round pick and a conditional fifth round pick. And also, I'm apologize if I butchered those. Uh, those were those certainly names. names. Yeah, but. That's the initial trade. Um, what are your what's your thoughts? Uh, I mean, everybody was expressing their thoughts over the past day or so on it. Uh, some good, yeah. some bad. Um, I, I, I'm curious to see what you think of this. Um, uh, not a fan. <laughs> uh, you know, I we're going we're to talk about it more in depth. And again, I think as we saw the day play out, it was very evident that it was a buyer's market. Like a lot of guys that we thought would get traded didn't even get traded. It was a very um underwhelming trade deadline i would say in general you know even taking into consideration the pieces that were moved ahead of the deadline but i'll tell you what here's where i want to start with this entire thing is i think this was screwed up by the timing more than anything else i think dubis should have been ahead of the market and he should have been try been trading gensel as like the first domino to fall as opposed to letting the market set him set itself and then seeing what the prices were like and teams saying okay you know, maybe we don't want to give up all of this for Jake Gensel because we can give up just a second, and a third for Tyler to Foley or something like that. Obviously, Gensel's the better player, but like for the yeah. difference there, um, you know, and you're, you are talking about a rental in Gensel and I totally get that. Um, but, you know, in past years, we've seen rentals go, you know, I brought up the Claude Giroux one, right? You know, he lands Owen Tippett a first and a third as a rental. Uh, now, granted, they did include a fifth round pick in like two no name prospects in order to to get that done maybe those were sweeteners for them but still i mean that for a rental claude Giroux, i, I would think that gensel would have done better um so definitely underwhelmed i'm not saying it's bad um but i certainly don't like it and and i'll and i'll be honest too i think a lot of that is charged by the fact of what we had all heard was going to be the trade or what was floated out there in terms of the trade um, you know, I was texting with multiple people that were telling me what the return was going to be. And it ended up being nothing like what we said. We knew bunting, right? We knew bunting earlier in the day was definitely going to be a part of it. But um, what I was hearing and what other people had said were going to be was a second round pick included Jackson Blake. Um, and then who's uh, who's the defenseman? Moro. Why am I drawing a blank on his name now? Yes. Yeah. More of the defenseman. Um and I was like, okay, that to me is pretty solid. I know you're not getting a first round pick out of it, but I would take either one of those prospects over a first round, a late first round pick from Carolina, like it would have been. So I thought that mm -hmm. was a pretty, pretty solid deal. And I thought, okay, this is a really good return. And then the actual return comes out, and I'm just like flabbergasted by getting this. And um, I want your take on this aspect of it too, because the bunting thing to me, I'm not even necessarily viewing him as getting like an asset or value back. I almost looked at it like doing Carolina a favor and getting him off the books for the next two seasons at four and a half million because he was not fitting in there. I think they would have loved to have cleared him off the books, whether it was an Agenzel deal or something else uh, to bring in somebody else. So, you know, I, I think Bunting's a fine player. I think he's going to fit here, you know, somewhere in the top or middle six, but at four and a half million dollars and taking the risk of that being on the books for the next two seasons, I would have rather have almost just not had him be part of it and just had the cap space for the next couple seasons. Yeah, that's why I initially thought that the rumors and and who knows if this was actually rumors that they were going to be thrown in or if this was just fan speculation that that um, Blake and Morrow were going to be included in, into this trade. No, like legit people. Were, I mean, I, I was talking with people that cover the team that were hearing yeah. like that was like that's who Mark Madden was speculating was part of the deal. Uh, DK had put out there that Moro was in the deal. Like, li I don't know what happened here, how it got out, what it was supposed to be, and then what ended up being the return. But I think that plays into people being so underwhelmed by it. Yeah, and I, I think that when it comes to bunting, whenever that name was thrown out there, I thought, okay, that's fine. But to me, that wouldn't have been the main piece of the deal. 
and looking at yeah. the deal that we got, it's it's arguably the main piece of the deal. I mean, based off of the prospects that were thrown in, I'm not saying they're bad. And obviously, in the Penguin system, I think that they are immediately in the top. Yeah, one. they're probably all three in the top six or seven. Yeah. yeah, I mean they they are they're definitely in the top handful of prospects in the Penguins. But I think that's just an attribute of how bad the Penguins farm system was, mm-hmm. as opposed. But to the, but to that point, it's also pretty that sad that prospects. neither one of them are top two. Yeah, neither one of them are top two. I, I when I thought saw Michael Bunting, I would have thought that he was more so the a secondary piece, kind of like like. Do you remember whenever we traded for Phil Kessel and initially, like, yeah, we got Alex Galchenyuk, but POJ was really the main yeah. asset in our eyes. It's like this guy I, can help out I, I the thought, NHL right now, but he's yeah, not I, the, I thought it was going to be something like that where we would have gotten an NHL asset that could help out, but we're going to get a better prospect in return. We didn't get that, which is why I agree with you. I think the the trade, it's not necessarily bad. It's just pretty underwhelming for what you would have liked to have hoped. What we have, were hearing before the actual trade yeah. call was announced. Um, I, I think that these prospects could be okay. Um, at, le- at least some of them I saw, I was watching a highlight package that someone on Twitter put out today of w- which one was it? The Vili Koivunen. I, I, I'm butchering yeah. these names. Um, <laughs> I mean, he, he looks like he's got some flash to him, so that could be exciting, but that's not a guarantee. And I, I would have liked to yeah. have gotten, I would have liked to have gotten personally, if bunting was going to be included, no matter what, I would have sacrificed get, not getting any of these three and just getting one of the other two. I think that that would have been a better deal in my eyes than than getting a, a handful. I would have gotten rather gotten the quality over the quantity in this case, which I think the Penguins got quantity more so. I understand from Dubas' perspective, you, you got to take what you can get. You're, you're not going to be able to win every single trade. And from his perspective, I'm sure that he looks at the, the state of the Penguins, the state of the future of the Penguins, and knows that he needed to do something. And trading Jake Gensel was going to be that something to do and retain the, or, or to, to get the most out of the trade and get the most assets mm-hmm. he can. I just wish they would have really stuck to their guns and tried to get one of those top two fish in the prospects. But I, I think the trade is fine by itself. I, I, I think that um, it, it does enough for the Penguins where – Bunting, he hasn't worked out in Carolina, but if he can be a 63 point score like he was a couple of years ago in Toronto at, at yeah. four and a half million dollars, I think that would be perfectly fine. Um, and, and sure. so I, I well, it, that one's more of just a wait and see on, on that one. And then the the prospects themselves, I, I think that they, like I said, they immediately improved the Penguins' uh, farm system themselves, but none of these guys are really. NHL prospects in the sense of like they're going to be here in like a year or two and make this team better in the immediate future. And like none of I them have, no have timetable like, on them. Yeah, none of them have that pop. Like they're going to be like a star or even like a top six player in the NHL. I mean, these guys to me are guys that you round out your roster with. And not saying that one of them won't or can't overachieve that and attain that. I mean, you know, let, let's let's look at like the Brian Rust, right? I don't think that anybody necessarily looked at him at carving out the NHL career that he has had. Um, but, you know, going back to the quantity over quality thing, man, if they would have just done, you know, based off seeing what the return ended up being, just even Moro in a first or Moro even in a second. Like I take that because of what he, what I think he's going to be a, as an offensive defenseman, basically the baton being handed from Latang to him. Um, I, I, I take that over the package that they got just because again, I think that they settled for the quantity of players, but you know, out of these three guys, I will be and and this is me going on record right now. I, if one of these guys, turns into an everyday middle six NHLer, I will be surprised. What's funny is I, I was gonna, about to say, I on Twitter, and, and granted, this is someone on Twitter, in their bio, they said they, they're a uh, hockey prospect analyst, but, you know, the, the, take mm-hmm. that for a grain of salt. But sure. they were talking about each of these prospects, and they were talking about the ceiling of each of them. Now, I'm not sure which one was which outside of the Cruz Lucius. I know he was the one that he said yeah, he's, he's not even sure that he's an NHL talent. Sure. Um, yeah. But the other two, he said one of them was going, it, it has the upside of being a top nine winger. And then the other one has an upside of being a bottom six winger. So yeah, I, I, I'm not really thrilled when I hear that we traded away one of our best players 
And I, I, listen, I, only, I, I know the Penguins had to rebuild and everything and they had to give Jake a contract and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not really thrilled if the return for a 40-goal point-per-game type of score was maybe a top-nine winger. Like, like that, that's really what we're getting. And I understand Michael Bunting's there. But I, I look at the prospects. I look at the prospects. Yeah. And you don't even know yeah. Michael Bunting might be a third-wing third wing guy in Pittsburgh. We don't know. The, the trade itself, Again, like he- I said, you helped it's Carolina fine. clear four and a half million dollars in cap for the next two seasons. Like you may have just aided them in being able to extend Jake Denso in the process of doing this by taking Michael Bunting. Oh, I, mean, I was looking like, at their cap space. They have yeah. $36.1 million of cap space going into next off season. If they want to sign Jake, yeah. they can. Yeah. If he wants to sign, I, th- I, I think they definitely want to, I think it's a question for his camp. If he's going to extend there. Um, but yeah, I, I just, and you know i don't by the way i want to put this out there too i do not believe that there was like a better offer from the rangers and we just chose not to take it because it's the rangers i'm not buying that like people were throwing around like the capo caco in a first round pick i don't think that that was on the table for the penguins or we would have taken it like you traded him in the division anyway which by the way is a completely separate thing as it is so uh, uh, to me in my eyes that trade is even worse i See, I, I, I'm on the take a swing. I mean, I would probably, and I know he's an RFA too, so I just feel like he would have been, because of the lack of production, I mean, he has, what, one forty point season, he only has 11 points this year. You're probably not re-signing, you probably didn't take very much to re-sign him, and then what he potentially could be, you know, next to Evgeny Malkin or Sidney Crosby. So I, I would be swinging for the fence as opposed to, again, this quantity of deal. Because let's talk about those the draft picks. They're only getting a first round pick out of this deal if they make the Stanley Cup. They're only getting that additional fifth round pick if they win the whole thing. So we're now rooting for the Carolina Hurricanes, which, by the way, if that happens, you got to assume Jake Gensel probably a pretty large reason for that being the case, which great for him. But that's even more reason for them to then extend him. Yeah. I just, so yeah. I, I don't know. This is, I, I, I find it very hard to even. Like, I think at the very best, you can be in the middle on. Yeah, I don't know about the merit of this, but I've always heard that Dubis is not great in trades. And I always say that you have to give a GM at least two full seasons to really know what they are with a team, the, sure. especially with what he took over. And I, there's not there's some things that didn't help the season, like the Ryan Graves contract that Dubis did. But I still think that you have to at least give them a, a, a full cycle with, with a team to really evaluate it. But knowing, and I'd have to go back and look at Toronto trades that were done, but knowing that that yeah. narrative has been around Dubis, that he's not that great in trades, I'm very curious to see if if, if that's true. And if, if it is true, this isn't that surprising to me then. If the, if that's the case where where he's he doesn't really really win the trades. Because to me, I'm not saying that Carolina necessarily won this trade because Jake Gensel is a rental, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel like the Penguins won it either. They got one of today's best playoff performers for the package that they did. So, you know, whether they go out and and win it all or whatever, they took a swing and I got it. And Carolina doesn't do this either. They never mm-hmm. trade for rentals. That's what everybody was talking about yesterday. I want to ask you, though, like uh, two things here, very different questions. But one, imagine Ron Hextall makes this trade. Imagine Ron Hextall still the GM of this team, and he makes this exact same trade, how we would be talking about it. Like how much slack by a certain part of the fan base is Kyle Dubas being given just because of the disdain for Hextall and he's not Hextall and he's still new, is he getting? And then the second part of this How much disdain is Kyle Dubas getting from a different set of Penguins fans because of things that he had already done in his tenure that weren't this trade deadline? The Ryan Graves signing the entire off. I mean, some people don't like the Eric Carlson trade, you know, Mm -hmm. so if you you might have already had a predetermined feeling about how you felt about Kyle Dubas. and, And I think that, you know, this trade deadline with what they did certainly didn't push anybody in his favor. Yeah, I don't think it pushed anybody in his favor. The trades weren't that that great. I mean, getting a getting a fourth round pick for uh, Chad Ruedel <laughs> that that was that was fine. Two thousand twenty seven. In two thousand twenty seven, it was probably. Do you want like a sixth round pick right now, or do you want a fourth down the road that far? 
I, I can get on board with that. I don't mind that trade whatsoever. Wish Chad the best. Yeah. Which, by the way, how crazy is it that he was the last member, like, other than Crosby, Rust, and, uh, and, and Gino Latang. and Latang, he was the last member from that 17 cup win after because he got traded after Jake. Mm -hmm. He was the, that's how long he had been with the Penguins. Just that's what the, I, I, I had to around. give him credit th today yeah. on Twitter. I had to give him credit for like, listen, you, you were around for a long time. Uh, it, like, kudos to him for carving out a nice Penguins career. But to go, answer your question, I understand why people are going to be upset about what Dubas has done this off this previous offseason and what Dubas did this trade deadline. I still stand by the opinion of me wanting to give him at least a full cycle, which to me a full cycle is you just took over the team this offseason, you play out this season, you have a full offseason upcoming, and then you get into next season and the next trade deadline. If you go through two offseasons and two trade deadlines, then I can better evaluate what you're doing with this franchise. Yeah. I don't think he got himself a head start for what he did this season, but – I, personally for me, I'm not there yet to really criticize him too much. I don't think that I, I think there is criticism to be to be had for Dubas in this trade, but sure. I don't think I'm going to say that he sh he shouldn't be the guy running this franchise based off of six months of work because I, I, I just think that's a little premature. You got to give it a little more time because if he turns around, gets this trade and then re-signs Jake on July 1st, I don't think anybody that's complaining about this trade is really going to be complaining that much anymore. That would be insane. I mean, yeah, you rarely see it happen. This is a case where I think you maybe could make the case for I, it happening. I, I think it's to going situations. to happen. I'll, I'll go on the record. My, my firm opinion is yeah. I think it is going to happen. Reason being, he's not negotiating contracts with any of the teams that were trading with him. You would mm -hmm. think that if you're in Jake's perspective, I understand he's going to be a free agent. And he could be looking to cash out somewhere and not yeah, necessarily we'll the team he gets to traded Minnesota. to. Go home yeah. to Minnesota. But to me, you would at least be having negotiation thought like talks. Whether you're going to sign the papers or not, you're going to have them. He's not even having mm -hmm. them with the teams. Sounds like he's not having them with Carolina right now. And I understand he said today on Sportsnet he wanted to just focus on hockey. He's not worried about the contract talks. And yeah, that's all fine and good. But to me... It just seems a little odd that the team that is just trading for you as a rental, you're not talking to them at all about a contract extension. And so in my mm -hmm. eyes, I'm thinking, and we mentioned it, uh, I think it was like last week, you had mentioned it on our podcast, that there might be like a handshake agreement with the Penguins. This is like, th there's you're going to play an extra 30 games with another team, and you're going to come back and play with the Penguins. Maybe win the Cup. Because I don't think he wanted to leave the Penguins. I don't think he wants to leave Sidney Crosby. And after being Sidney Crosby's main winger, his best winger of Sidney Crosby's career for the past half decade plus, I, I feel like that's a hard gig to really give up, especially knowing the type of player that Sid still is at his age. And I feel like Jake might be the type of guy to want to come back and play with Sid because that's who he's played with his whole career. That's what he wants to do with Sid getting into the twilight of his career. I mean, who knows when that Twilight actually is going to show up? He's still over a point per game player at 36 years old. Right. But yeah, I I, I genuinely believe that Jake Gensel is going to re-sign with the Penguins this summer, and I think this is just going to be a short stint of him in Carolina. That'd be hilarious. Uh, I would also look very stupid for that. You know, basically goodbye Jake video that I took the time to make. Um, <laughs> but hey, uh, honestly, like, got me emotional. Uh, like watching that back afterwards, like. You know, I think the theory of not getting attached to players is great, but at times it's hard to practice. Uh, and and you know, when you actually like win things with a player on the team and you see the way that him and, and Sid have, you know, been by each other's side through, you know, so many years of hockey, that was the one thing that you could rely on. Like even this year, you know, there were often times where they were a one line team and those two guys were the only reason that they were competitive. So, yeah, I mean, I was emotional about Jake getting traded. So if he were to come back after just 30 games away from the team, that'd be great. It'd be hilarious. Um, I want to, we, I don't want this to be like too long winded of a video and too long form, but I do want to talk about the moves that weren't made and if we're surprised by any of them. Um, I think what Dubas said afterwards, I don't know if you caught his press conference afterwards or anything, but I, I think what he 
said made some sense to me. I was a little bit upset about you know him not moving Riley Smith, Lars Eller, Alex Nedeljkovic. Alex Nedeljkovic, I still am. But I, I think what he said in mm-hmm. terms of the guys with term left made sense because right now teams are still operating you know under this current salary cap. The salary cap is expected to go up. So teams might be more willing to take on contracts in the offseason that they wouldn't be right now once they know what that number is. Brian Gray. So, you know, once he said, uh, yeah, I don't know about <laughs> that, but once he said that, I was like, okay, so, you know, maybe we can see a, a Riley Smith trade uh, in the offseason. Lars Eller, I'm not so sure. I would have thought this was the time as opposed to the offseason because, like, he has been a pretty decent fit. I don't hate the idea of him being back mm-hmm. next year. Um, but, to me, Riley Smith's got to go. I think it's been a bad fit. I don't think he wants to be here. Um, I just, I, I'm curious about that one. And then the Dukovic, I would have just taken, and, and this kind of goes against what I said about Gensel, but we're talking about, you know, maybe the top rental as opposed to a backup goaltender. I would have taken whatever you could have gotten on the market. I mean, we saw Jake Allen go for a second and third, not saying he would have gotten like that exact same return, but like, I, I don't know how Alex the Dukovic wasn't traded today. I don't either. That's the one that is the most confusing to me. As far as Smith and Eller go, I, I, I think that Dubas has a point that the cap is going to go up, so the market could be a little different because of that. Sure. And based off of the current market and the trade market, is and looking at the trade you even just got for Gensel, I understand that you're not going to get the same type of return for those those players that you would for Gensel, but knowing what you got for Gensel kind of sets the bar of what to expect. And so I'm sure Dubas was was thinking, we have term on these guys. We can circle back around maybe in the summer, if not sometime next season, if we have to. And you don't want to have to sell for pennies on the dollar if you need to. Because that seems right. kind of like what they would have gotten if they would have done it this trade deadline because yeah. of this. It, it, was a, it was a seller's or it was a buyer's market for sure. Selling mm-hmm. was not a, 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 a big thing this offseason or the, this trade deadline. And I, I feel like it was a smart thing to hold on to them if you think that you're going to get more out of them either this summer or next season. Because I would have just hated to trade them away just because Dubas felt like he had to because he has a quote-unquote rebuilding team. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little underwhelmed by the entirety of it. Obviously, the Gensel trade itself, but the entirety of what today was or, the you know, I guess the trade deadline as a whole was. Um, but, you know, like you said, this is uh, this is just one part of it, and we will see. Dubas has a long time. I think they've committed to him for a long time, and we're going to see his vision play out. So um, that's all I can say on it, man. Where, we'll see how it goes. I'll I'm close out with a, a question before before we close this Ted? video. I posted right. a question last night on our Twitter. Um, I ruffled some feathers with the question because people you mentioned people were you got emotional. People were calling people out for being emotional about losing Jake. Um, so <laughs> okay, I wrote this on, uh, on it. Was this on the top, whatever, like around the four? Yeah. Two, so seven. in your opinion, Jake Gensel, a top what in Penguins history? Mm. That's tough, man. I mean, just based off the numbers, he has the case to be top 15 to 20. As crazy as that sounds, when you think about all the great players that have played, the Pittsburgh Penguins mm-hmm. um you know also like it's not that short of a period of time like I know it feels like just yesterday that it was 2017 and we were winning the second back-to-back cups and he was coming up but he had a relatively long tenure um without going through and like looking at the history of the Pittsburgh Penguins like so I gotta give you a little bit of a bracket here I would say he's somewhere between uh 15 to 22 that's where I have him. I, I said on Twitter, I, I think that he is easily a top 20 player in Penguins history. And I okay. think that you could be as high as 15. And he might be at 15 himself, but that's still top 15. I, I, I think that there was a lot of people that were underappreciating how good Jake Gensel was for the Pittsburgh Penguins, how much of an impact player he was w- while he was here. And according to me, he's going to be I mean, next season playoff as well. Numbers. Like- Point per game player in the playoffs. I mean, over the last few seasons, points per game player in the regular second season. most second most goals per game to only Lemieux. Yeah, I I think that he is easily top twenty on the cusp of being top fifteen. And I'll tell you what on on whatever we, whatever day next week we record 
our Penguins episode. Yeah. I will have my definitive top 20 players in Penguins history, and Jake Gensel guess, is going to be in it. I guess I, I have to do the it. same. I'll see if I can get that video uploaded, too. I wanted to do it for today, but something's going off my Google Drive. I wanted to play the, the video that I made to see if it would make me cry watching it again on here, but I wasn't able to do it. Um, yeah, I, I got nothing else. I want to know everybody's thoughts, though, on, on the return. So uh, let us know in the comments what you think about the return of Jake Gensel. Uh, who, speaking of returns of Jake Gensel, will return to PPG Paints uh, in, ba in basically exactly three weeks with the Carolina Hurricanes to play the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I'm sure that will be an emotional night for everybody involved as well. Um, I don't be, have anything else. To me, that'll right. be a telltale sign. If, he's, if he doesn't seem that emotional, he's coming back. <laughs> there we go. We're going to read into the body language. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell on the channel. Hit us in the comments, like I said. Uh, also, follow us everywhere at, at around the 412 in the description, like we always do, even with a podcast, regular videos, whatever we're putting up with the content. Uh, everything custom designs, our friend Haley Wagner, small business will be there. Uh, I don't have anything else. So, until you guys see us or hear us for the podcast next week, for Tyler, for Smitty, thanks for watching another video. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>